Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. Very biased, probably, as usual. And today I would like to talk about a constant, which uh, certainly I call it I call it the drunken bird constant, but it, that's clearly not the standard name. Uh, we'll see what it is. But anyway, it's, it's some part of a story which I usually like to tell a lot. Um, but I sometimes get it wrong, or sometimes get it wrong, because I, I thought it would be more complicated than it actually is in the end. Yeah answer in the end is pretty pretty cute and uh, that's why we are here today i'm kind of trying to explain that a lot and i will just go through uh, cases one two and three and then we will do something live and then i'll show you the theorem but it's really about this idea of uh, coming home or not and we will kind of see some repetition so it really goes up to depend, does depend on some dimension but then it doesn't seem doesn't really depend on the dimension but in the end it actually does depend on the dimension very very strange um but anyway so let's go so drunken bird by the way if i forget to say it is if the dimension is three right the bird like bird can go in all directions possible um birds flying backwards are a bit weird but my birds can fly backwards well that's for sure okay so what is it all about it's about random walks and the easiest form of random walk is a 1d random walk um we'll go back to those illustrations in a second when I just run it. But essentially it's just, well, you take a step left or right with equal probability. So you flip a coin, whether you get, go forward or backward. And yeah, I just ran a random walk and it's just the distance from the origin here. And it goes out like up to 20 and then goes back and forth a little bit and then goes back down to something like minus 10 and then goes up and whatever. That, that's kind of what the random walk should look like. It's kind of a really beautiful prototypical example of a random walk in 1D. Um, and we are interested in the probability of coming home, which is really just coming back to the origin. So what I really should do, so this is kind of an okay picture, but what I really want to do is to, to have this histogram here, where, well, here's the origin in this case, where I just uh, denote how often in my thousand steps, so thousand steps, I'm how far away from the origin so roughly as you can see here for this random walk um so here between 10 and 20 there's a peak and yeah between 10 and 20 if you draw a line here that's probably where it's most of the time the, the random walk here um and it's rarely far out because it's probably really only be here and it's also rarely negative which only would be here something like that i hope the histogram makes some sense i'm just counting how often i'm at a certain position away from the origin and if you really do that it's it's like easy to see we will run that or you can convince yourself very quickly that the probability is probably one so um here or for, for example it would be just how often you cut uh the the x-axis not of the x-axis the other axis the y-axis there were only two chances and i got it wrong uh congratulations i got it wrong <laughs> anyway so whenever there's a 50 50 chance i probably get it Anyway, so um, the probability of going home is, is one. You can convince yourself quickly and we'll do that in a second. Similarly, a 2D random walk, well, just you can go in all the four directions with equal probability. So the random walk will look a little bit like this. We'll run that live and you can do a histogram as well. And if you really do that, it kind of gets a bit ambiguous. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. So we are still interested in the homecoming probability, but it's not so clear to me. If you just do it uh, on the kind of on the machine which we will do in a second and then you go to 3d 4d 5d i'm not going to illustrate a 4d one don't worry but 3d whatever you know you can go in six directions and you do it with equal probability and you draw the histogram and it's kind of e almost immediate from from the distance so it's just matters oh i should have said that so here i really kind of can because it's kind of a nice 1d thing I can kind of measure how far it is in both directions. So here's zero, negative, positive. Here, I really just have the absolute distance. So zero is here, yeah. And then just absolute distance, same here, absolute distance from zero. And essentially this guy kind of goes out and moves outwards. So you can convince yourself very, very quickly that the probability is probably not one anymore, um, but probably smaller. So let me uh, run that for you. Um, so here, is a little code I wrote. It's not very sophisticated code, but kind of easy to understand it. 
So it just does a random walk um, like this one. And every time I, I, I just run it, it will do an, another random walk. So yeah, 10,000 steps actually. And yeah, it goes, well, let's just make this a little bit smaller so you can see what's going on. It just does uh, one step at a time, right? So it goes one, goes another one, goes another one, goes backward, forward, backward, whatever. That's how it should look like. And this is my little histogram and it, it will hit the origin once. That's exactly what it does because in this case it just starts here. So let's go a little bit further out, maybe to 100. That sounds fine. Mm, this one gets very negative as you can see. Bounces a bit around so it should be a little bit negative here as you can see there. Roughly around 4. Yeah, works. And it hits the origin 3 times. So let's go to 10,000. 10,000. Um, we'll calculate a little bit but not too much and goes a little bit out. The histogram should be kind of negative here but there's still a lot around the origin and it hits the origin 35 times so let's run it again mm -hmm, whatever histogram is a little bit crazy in this case it hits the origin 125 times and just do it once more blah 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 whatever it hits the origin 109 times so you can convince yourself fairly fairly quickly that the probability is probably one to hit the origin okay 2D case, same, um, choosing the dimension, uh, the directions randomly. Let's maybe go down to um, 10 in this case, and let's just see what happens. Uh, just this, oh, that was a little bit too much. Let's just go to three. So it now plots a two dimensional version. So it starts at the origin, kind of the first one, two, three, kind of the first one is not visible, I don't know why, it doesn't matter. Just the same histogram. I uh, will go back to this histogram in a second and it hits the origin just two times in this case. Um, we're not counting the starting, the origin. And let's do something like 100 now, maybe. Okay, we'll see. So it goes somewhere up, back and forth in the plane. It is most of the time, you can kind of see that most of the time it's around to the origin. Um, this is a two. 3D histogram. So this is where it really is. So very often it's like here. Um, yeah, very often it's kind of centered around here. It goes a little bit out to this side. Whatever, and hits the origin four times. Excellent. So let's go to whatever, 10,000. And now you can't probably can't see a lot anymore. This is a random walk with 10,000 steps. I have no idea what's going on. It's still pretty much centered around the origin. Not so far away. Kind of moves outwards, kind of centered around here. You can kind of see that, right? It's kind of centered around here. It's the origin 13 times only. Before it was like 100 times. Um, let's do another one. Ooh, this one moves out quite a lot. But as you can see, it moves out quite a lot. It's not, it's not around the origin a lot. It moves out quite a lot. It hits the origin zero times. Interesting. So it gets kind of, kind of ambiguous here. Okay, whatever. Moves out quite a lot. It gets really random. Hits the origin six times. Not, not that often, actually. We had zero times, we had six times, whatever. And here's the same thing in dimension three. Well, let's just run it, just 10,000 steps. Um, yeah, so it's a three dimensional picture now. This is how, this is my drunken bird. Just flies around like crazy. Here's the histogram, and you can kind of already clearly see that this moves away from the origin. Hits the origin zero times. Um, Let's do one more, maybe. Um, we'll see. Kind of, kind of, I said you can't tell the difference here. Moves out quite a lot. It hits the origin once. Well, not so bad. Maybe one more. Um, just completely random. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Move. I have no idea. It, it moves out a lot. Hits the origin zero times. And yeah, so this is just um, for... I just repeat now the random walk process in dimension one a hundred times and I just uh, mark whether it hits the origin or not and it hits from all from all 100 different repeats of my 10,000 step uh, random walk it hits the origin 100% of the time that's why the graph looks like this so you can convince yourself as I said really really quickly that for d equals one this should work for d equals two here's the same for d equals two repeated a hundred times so let's see what happens. Uh, this this kind of computes a little bit, so just give it some some time, and yeah, we'll have a short 
break in between. Okay, it's done. Again, same illustration. Sometimes it goes down to zero. Sometimes it stays here. So I would guess from this picture, but it's kind of a lot of area, as you can see. So most of the time it actually hits the origin and then it just goes sometimes down to zero. So it's kind of not quite clear to me what this is supposed to do. Um, and I was smart enough to run the uh, 3D version in advance because it would run a little bit. And as you can see, this thins out. So this essentially is probably, this is probably not going back to the origin uh, most of the time. And that's kind of the illustration I have. And it turns out that you can make this really precise, like precise, precise, like writing down a formula, an almost closed formula, it has some integrals. But it's really, really cute, actually. So the probability of returning home for p equals 1 is, is 1. Nobody is surprised about that, hopefully, at this point um, into the video. The probability of, of uh, for two dimension 2, dimension 2 is weird. It's still 1. For dimension 2, this ambiguous case, it's still 1. It somehow converges, like, really, really slowly. That's kind of what happens. And otherwise, it's given by a really cute formula, actually. So it's just, um, essentially, you just have this integral, which I just wrote down for d equals 3. It's really simple. It has, well, the number of dimensions as many integrals, and it's always just cosh, cosh, cosh. So 1 over 3 minus cosh, 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 uh, dx, dy, dz, and then there's some constant in front. And here's kind of the general form. And you can just write that down. And I was a little bit shocked that this is actually doable. I can just write down that formula, which does not work for d equals 1 and 2, but you can just... Uh, right now, it's kind of very exciting. So d equals 1 and 2 are kind of a bit special and afterwards it kind of stabilizes. And yeah, in case you wonder, of course you can evaluate the integral, at least numerically, and then the probability just drops down to zero very, very quickly. So um, for the drunken bird constant would be for here's 1, 2, 3, the drunken bird constant would be around here. Uh, this is a really bad one. It should be around here. <laughs> Maybe that works a little bit better. Uh, so whatever, so you can just compute it. It's, it's three point something, zero, so 34% or something. Um, doesn't really matter the precise value, but roughly something like this. And then it drops down very, very quickly. So in dimension 20, you will not come back home. Um, and this just works for everything except D equals one and two. And actually it does work for D equals one. So let's go back to the to the code because I just did it. Um, yeah, so here is, is our drunken bird constant, 34% and whatever, whatever shit. And it just really computes this integral, a slightly different presentation of the integral using some kind of Bethel function. Don't worry about that too much. That will work for d equals 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. But anyway, and I just compute it. And as you can see, for d equals 1, this is essentially 1, as it should be. Just for d equals 2, it's not what it should be. And then those guys are then fine. So d equals 8, the pr probability is like 7% or something. But here, for d equals 1, it actually works. It actually works. And that's why I think the, that's why the illustration actually also works. While d equals 2 is a little bit flawed, but the integral is really giving you uh, the wrong result. So in case you want to ever do a random walk in higher dimensions, just be prepared that the probability of coming home it's like really, really tiny. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.